Okay, JB, it uh, seems that we have a few answers to some questions. People are wondering about the 1938 Zephyr. It's been a project for a while, and we haven't had it, had it on the road yet. And people are wondering, what is the update on that? And what, why haven't we seen an update? Well, we ran into um, something we haven't seen before. We're in the, uh, the coils that we've had rebuilt and have had excellent success with in the past. Um, we not only had one fail, we had two fail. Now, remember, these are rebuilt coils, quote unquote, um, to one degree or another. There, so we're supposed to be able to rely on the re rebuilder that he tested them prior to selling to him. And these were not cheap. These were uh, hundreds of dollars. And so we took the position that, OK, he's a quality builder. He's been around forever. And it's very difficult to test this equipment unless you put it on an engine. Mm -hmm. So we put it on the engine, and there's a partial failure on one, I think, and a t total failure on the other. And you got really three elements in the ignition system, uh, four if you count the spark plug. Uh, you got the coil, you got the ballast resistor, and you got um, the uh, condenser. Okay, so what do these things do? This is a, this is designed differently than what a normal eight cylinder engine would be because it's dealing with with 12 cylinders so it's a, it has to be bigger physically it does not a converted eight cylinder coil it is a 12 volt only coil so obviously there aren't a lot of those around we've had excellent success with this builder until this until we did this one so we suspected everything uh, other than these because when we had difficulty starting it uh, and that went on for quite a while um, we had to face the fact that one of the electronic components was not functioning. You know, the fuel system was working, but we simply could not get it to fire and run correctly. Mm -hmm. uh, remember, these things have to run not just for test purposes. Uh, we have to put them out in the street. They have to go run for hours at a time. They can't, you can't test in a vacuum. It has to be real life situations where the, the customer is going to be out on the road at some distance and he's got to have a couple of things on his side. One is a coil that's functioning, right. and then there's one that's in the trunk that we already know is good, that if he's out at a distance, uh, he has a backup, because of course, I don't think you're gonna be going into Napa to get one of these, okay. No, it's probably not easy to find. No, and it's one of the one of the uh, w the weaknesses, if you will, of the, of the electrical system, is that this thing is very, very important, and in the old days, they were commonly available. You could just go down to any uh, Lincoln store and they just give you however many you wanted. But that, of course, was a long time ago. So in order to create a, a, a system that's, that's reliable, we have to run it in, we have to drive it, we have to make sure that it starts and stops, it starts and stops, gets hot, gets cold, gets hot, gets cold. All, all that thermal cycling is very important, mm -hmm. especially for electronic equipment. It's all sealed up inside here, so we can't really see what's going on in there. Uh, and the people that rebuild these, there are only a few of them in the country that do them. And uh, we've uh, sec secured a, a couple of names of some other people that do them. And we're, gonna, we're having uh, these, actually, these coils are going to be sent to them. They're going to be rebuilt. And then we'll test them when they come back. Gotcha. To make certain that, they're, they're in, that they work properly. And the only way to do that is put it on an engine, start it, and run it. Now, what's happening in the interim is that um, all of this... Uh, messing around, if you will, right. is going to be borne by our company, not the customer, because we have to use the, the supposition that the parts that we put on that car are functional and working. If they're not functionally working, it's not his fault. Right. So why is he paying to do it over? See, you got to be thinking about these things as you go along. It's easier just to say, oh, I'll just throw it on the building, you know, uh, it's part of the process. No, it's not part of the process. You should have picked a good coil. Mm -hmm. You should have picked a good carburetor. You should have picked good components. And if you didn't, you should be responsible for them not working just as well as you are working for them, responsible for them working. So we had to take all that research time and all that uh, time, which is considerable, to figure out why the engine wasn't running properly. We have to discount that off of his bill and start over. Yeah. When we find coils that are functioning and we have a backup coil in the trunk for his, for later if necessary and the engine runs properly and it cycles up and down up and down and then we take it out in the street and we start it and stop it and take it up through the rpm range and back down again all these things have to be 
done ahead of time. Mm -hmm. Okay, you can't simply send this car out into the world and just hope it works, because yeah. that's that's not going to happen. What's its function in the car? It drops the voltage. Okay. Uh, Why is it dropping the voltage? Okay, so tell me what's this other item right here? And this is a voltage reducer. This is a, a modern version. Uh, they had earlier versions of them back when the car was built. But this is a, an up-to-date one you can buy from Napa uh, presently or other auto parts store. Mm -hmm. And what this does is it comes in, since we're using 12 volts elsewhere, mm -hmm. we want to make sure that, that the, the, the power that goes to that coil does not exceed 4 volts. It's not made to handle 12 volts. Now remember, you're, it's a drop, so you're going to create heat in there. That's what this coil is for. Okay. Okay. So it gets hot and it stops the the, the full 12 volts from making its way to the to the distributor. Yeah. Okay. And I think it also protects the points. Exactly. Okay. Right. Because you don't want to be running excessive voltage. All right. And then this last thing that has to be critically important, I'm sure, is uh, didn't you tell me this was a condenser? Yes, that's the condenser which is present in just about any. Ignition yeah, that you'll ever find. Pretty commonly found, but these are all points. Uh, yeah, parts these that all can fail. Coils has been a problem. Has there been anything else slowing you down on that project? Well, the fact that we didn't know it was the coil was really frustrating, and it would run sort of, kind of, but it would run rough. Mm -hmm. And what's of course happening there is the coil's not functioning properly, so we're firing on maybe six or eight cylinders out of twelve, and then it doesn't want to run, and it gets hot. So it was very frustrating to try and figure it out. We assumed rightfully in most cases that these coils being rebuilt by a quality rebuilder are, are not the problem that that it was elsewhere and you've got carburation you've got all these other things that, that play into that so we didn't suspect them and so it took us a good deal of time but we've now discovered that they're faulty and we're going to replace them and we have other backups from from other projects that we we keep on hand so we do have them ready to go but all that took time to to analyze in the meantime when the engine did finally run we discovered some very minor cracks in the aluminum heads well we when it got up to operating temperature uh and that's really important you know just starting and running it for a few seconds or a few minutes doesn't really get you much the entire system has to work a lot longer than just long enough to start it and run it for a few minutes so <clears throat> we let it idle <clears throat> every a lot of the systems function properly we're looking for leaks we're looking for radiator problems we're looking at anything at all we noticed that there was a, a tiny bit of seepage coming out of one of the heads, out of the top of the head, which means that we got a little micro fracture, which will, of course, get bigger with time because as it heats and cools, heats and cools, that's what aluminum does. That's what all metals do. Then they expand violently, and when they come back, um, they look okay, but in fact, they're not. Mm. And aluminum is particularly subject to expansion when it's heated. So. They worked fine for a while. We didn't. It wasn't leaking, and all of a sudden it was leaking. So now this is part of the process of finding, determining what it, problems it still has, and doing it here while we're here at the shop. Mm -hmm. Once we get out on the road, it becomes a lot more problematic. I mean, if you've got a, a mechanical difficulty, you know, it's, that's why we go around the block 20, 30 times because we're trying to get the thing up to operating temperature. We want it to operate in like it would be in a normal setting and in, 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 in as it's as it's going to be delivered and uh, we want if it's going to have an issue it's going to have a problem we want it to happen within a block of the shop so we go around and around and around it's kind of boring mm -hmm. <clears throat> but uh but if we we've learned from the past that there's always something wrong there's no such thing as a, a car with any n number of hundreds of parts that something's not going to be unhappy so it's just not realistic. And a lot of cars, unfortunately, they push them out the door. Yeah, it's fine. Yeah, I ran for five minutes. You know, uh, that's, not, that's not good. Yes. And we, we are going to do the very best we can to try and ensure that the car will operate properly when it gets to its home. And mm -hmm. part of that process is going through these, these testing, um, first static in the shop, and then we take it out on the road in, in close by, and then we'll take it on a, a trip you know, for some number of miles up north and get it in a higher altitude and, and bring it back and put it through its paces basically so that regardless of where it goes it has a better chance of, of functioning and uh, that can take some time and it's frustrating yeah. because we we have very highly experienced people here doing this everybody that works in these cars has been doing it forever and they're really good 
That doesn't mean that they can make aluminum better when it's not. That doesn't mean we, we, we don't get a, a coil rebuilt that is not properly rebuilt. And you're not dealing with brand new parts when the car was built. No, but in, in, in fairness, we, we have to be responsible for that. We can't use that as an excuse. Right. That's why they pay us. Yep. You know, that's, and, and it's just that simple. And if we have made a mistake like these, we absorb the cost of it. We also absorb the cost of testing it because we, sh we should not have got a bad one in the first place. Yeah. And that's our fault. It's, we can't blame it on the customer. Right. And we can't make him pay for it. That's not right. So we take it off his bill, we start over, and when the thing functions properly, then he's back on, on a billing cycle. This is part of the, the, what I feel is the morality of this whole thing is that you're entrusted with these incredible cars that you, they spend a great deal of money and they take a long time your job is to take care of them and, and do them properly, but not to the point where you're making up for your own mistakes. Mm -hmm. And the guys will come in. I asked Mark, I said, you know, none of this is on his bill. He said, I would not I, I would not do that. He, right. I didn't have to tell him. Right. He just took it off his bill. Right. So now we're paying, and that's the way it should be. That's yeah, we're getting close. We've heard it run, and everybody in the building, when it finally ran for a while, everybody just, it has this sound to it that's... Yeah. Indescribable. It really is cool.